Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to go through what the different scans are available in the ProTrader software. Starting off with the little button that looks like a magnifying glass that says scanning tools if you leave your cursor on it. Click on that and we've got a whole list of different uh, scans that are available. The first one I'm going to go through is patterns and events. This is probably the most common or the event section is. This first section here is in chart patterns. This is what it's, it's looking for these patterns in a chart. Uh, keep in mind these are all computer generated patterns. So they're not going to be as good as your eye when you see patterns, but it can give you a bit of an idea uh, if, of what scans come up if you click these bottom, these charts. Um, they're the patterns, the events section. This is the same as what's in indicator events, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, the events basically start with, in a nutshell, this is an OR formula. So it's going to look for, like this is a six period breakup. You can change that to 13, 21, 35, whatever, how many days, that's a days. Breakup or break down, you can choose of the high low or the close. So there's different options for that. That's basically looking for anything that's broken up, breaks up as higher than what it was or the close higher than what it was six days ago. So again, you can change that. The next one is within 2% the last period of its high. So you're looking for a percentage, um, again, of day period, whatever you want to put in there and a percentage of its high or low. Again, you can choose. This is looking for increasing volume. So again, if you just want to see volume increase for so many days, you put that in. TCI stands for Trend Channel Indicator. So it's looking for a channel indicator of a, a break up out of the channel. Um, <laughs> yep. And then this one is again looking for a trend channel indicator, anything that's in an uptrend, downtrend or horizontal. So if you have them, you can actually see them on the chart um, as a as a chart, which I'll show you a bit later. This is looking for a MACD crossover. Again, that's your time period. Your OBV is looking for a percentage um, of that's your time, your period of time. Uh, no, sorry, that's your percentage above how many days ago. This is looking for volume spike. So this is a volume more than 300% of a day ago. So that's looking for a big spike in volume. Uh, trend line crossing, this one looks at any lines that you've drawn on your chart. Now, it could be five years ago. Uh, it could be last week. If anything has crossed over a line that you've drawn on your chart, it will come up. Uh, find any stock that's left to gap up or exactly this one gap down by so many cents. It's self-explanatory. Now, as I mentioned, these are all an all formula. So it's going to look for that or that or that or that. If you click on this match selected, it becomes an and formula. So you then be looking for this and this and this. So you can imagine your number of stocks would be a lot less coming up in the scans. So it's basically explaining what the events are. All of the scans have this filter section. And this is where, like, if I was to remove all these filters, you'll end up with 500 and something results in your scan. So you go through and you filter it out. So you want to put in a price range in here. Um, you can ignore anything that's got uh, results less than 280 days. So that's if it's been in a trading halt or hasn't traded. Um, you want to um, ignore results that have no trading range for the last day. So sometimes that, um, yeah, you just want to get anything out that's in a trading halt. Um, you want to, this is also looking at the value. So ignoring results that have less, uh, value less than so this is 25,000 so sometimes you just want to make sure there's dollar signs going through um, and then this is volume so you're looking for anything so you want to have volume going through so you can fill these are the two main ones to really filter out um, and your price range so if you're going say from 50 cents to 50 dollars you can narrow that down you can also narrow the price range down or pr the scan results down by using the filters the other one is that everything is set on daily. So while this is ticked on daily, again, this is in every type of scan. Um, the minute you change and click on weekly, all those numbers up there become, instead of a daily, like six days, it's now six weeks. So it changes it. And then same for month. 
um, that if you change that it becomes six months. So be in mind that anything you change here, that volume set of being days changes to weeks or months. Uh, you can also scan down here. So this is market. What you can do when, if you've got watch list, you can scan watch list. If you've done a scan on, we did this on a previous video where if you want to scan, do a scan of a scan, you can do a scan and then go back and scan the last scan. So there's options. This is scanning ASX. You can scan the American market. Um, looks like Singapore as well. So there's a few options there that you can scan. And then it's allowing you to scan sectors as well and industries. So there's, you can, if you click on sector, then it gives you another option to go through and you can scan particular sectors. So what it does do though, is it will save this when you press scan. So if you then go back and don't go down here and you change all this around, you'll still be scanning what you scanned last. So make sure you go back down here and check that you've got, you know, all market ASX all. Okay, so that is scanning for patterns and events. Basically, if you go into scanning for indicator and events, it's exactly the same, except now you've got some options up here for indicators. So this is looking at um, your a close or a moving average, a weighted moving average, exponential moving average, um, is above, below, crossed above, crossed below. Again, another moving average and then your day period. This is your rate of change, overbought, oversold. Your relative strength indicator, again, overbought, oversold. Um, and then your stochastics um, with your periods in here, overbought, oversold, and then you've got your Bollinger Band in here. So that's the only difference between patterns and events and indicators and events is that you've got patterns on one and it's going to look for patterns and this one's looking at indicator crossover. Everything else is the same. Quickly going down, candles. It gives you, all you're doing is looking for different candle patterns. Then you've got your filter section, which is the same. Then you've got activity, oops, activity. Um, this one is pretty self-explanatory. People do ask me sometimes, how do I get the top 20? The, um, with, we can't actually do that. But the best way and the closest we can get to is if you type in top 20 stocks by market cap is the closest it's not exact but it's the closest you can get to the top 20 so again you could do top 200 top 50 whatever you want to do um, and then you can also look at these different options that you've got here um, again that's all self-explanatory in there and then you've just got the filter section the other one that uh, Sam does a lot do, he's got his own set in the Guru toolbox, is the Sam's Darvis, but this is the default Darvis scan as well. So again, all pretty self-explanatory on things that you want to do with finding Darvis. And again, it's got the filter section at the bottom that you can filter things out. So play around. All these things you need to just play around with and see what you come up with really work out what you're trying to find and then go back to the scans and work out how you're going to find what you're looking for. It's the easiest way and the simplest way to try and explain it to people. Another one that I do like to use all the time is fundamentals. Um, and I like to dividend. So I usually click on dividends and say more than 5%. And if I want with a franking credit, um, say with 100% franking credit, and then usually leave everything blank. And yeah, you can either put filters in, but I usually sometimes like to leave that blank and get up quite a few a uh, few stocks that are paying a dividend, just go through them and see what there is. So the in a nut, that's a very quick overview of what these scans do. In some more videos, I can go through them in a little bit more detail, but that's just a quick brief run through.